If you're using AI to help you with your work, there's a mistake that's ending careers and costing firms millions. And most people don't even know they're making it. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why it happens. And I'll show you a practical way to protect yourself. Let me show you what I mean. A $290,000 government report containing non-existent references. A $1.6 million health plan citing research papers that don't exist. Lawyers facing sanctions for submitting fictional case law. This keeps happening. Deloitte has now been caught twice this year alone. In Australia, they had to issue a partial refund after their report for the Department of Employment included fabricated references and invented quotes from federal court judgments. Then in Canada, a 526-page provincial healthcare workforce plan was found to contain citations to papers that don't exist. Academics named in the references confirmed they never wrote the studies attributed to them. Springer, Nature had to retract a machine learning book after discovering it was riddled with unverified citations. The publisher confirmed they were unable to verify over half of the references. The cases seem to be just piling up. So what's going wrong here? Why does this keep happening? And can anything actually be done about it? That's what I want to cover today. I'll walk through why AI hallucinations happen at a fundamental level, the human factors that make these failures worse, and a practical approach to catching these mistakes before they cost you money or your reputation. Whether you're a consultant producing client deliverables, a working professional using AI for writing assistance, an engineer building AI-powered products, or an executive trying to figure out how to govern this technology responsibly, there's something here for you. When I look at why professional firms keep getting burned by AI hallucinations, I see three factors at play. First, how models actually work. The hallucinations aren't a simple bug that can be patched out. They emerge from how the technology functions at a fundamental level. Second, Context window limitations. There are real constraints on how effectively these models process the information we give them. Understanding these constraints is essential to using AI effectively. Third, verification gaps. Content goes from AI output straight to client deliverable with nobody examining it critically. No checks, no balances. These factors compound each other. Understanding them is essential to mitigating the risk. Let's start with how these models actually work. The generative language models we're discussing, systems like ChatGPT, Claude, are autoregressive statistical systems. When you give them a task, the model breaks your input into tokens. You can think of these tokens as word fragments. It then generates a response one token at a time. Each new token is selected based on what came before. The model has learned from its training data which tokens typically follow which patterns. Here's the critical insight. At generation time, the model calculates a probability distribution over possible next tokens based on everything that came before. The output emerges from learned statistical patterns rather than verified knowledge. This mechanism is what makes these models flexible and creative. It's also what makes hallucination a persistent challenge. For specialized professional domains where the training data might be sparse or inconsistent, these probabilities can skew further from accuracy. Think of it like this. When you ask about something well represented in the training data, the probability distribution tends to favor accurate tokens. When you push into territory that was less represented or ask for very specific details like case citations or research paper references, the model essentially is pattern matching without verification. It generates what looks right based on what it's seen. Even if that specific combination of author, title, journal, and date never actually existed together. This explains why hallucinations often look perfectly plausible. They follow the right format. They might even name real researchers, but the specific paper doesn't exist. Now, you might be thinking, what about if we give these models documents to work with? Can they at least use that information reliably? This brings us into in-context learning. That's the capability that allows these models to learn from examples and information we provide in our prompts. When you give a model examples or reference documents, it can extract information from the context and adapt its response accordingly. This is what makes RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, work. 
this is what enables internet search to be useful with ChatGPT or Claude. But here's what matters. A longer context window, adding more examples doesn't automatically improve performance. What matters is whether those examples are relevant and whether the model can actually use them effectively. And crucially, this in-context learning still operates through that same generation mechanism. The model is still generating tokens based on learned patterns. It can misinterpret the context you provide. It can generate plausible sounding outputs that don't actually reflect what's in the source material. In-context learning helps. It's genuinely useful, but it's not a complete solution to hallucinations. Now let's look at context window limitations, because this is one of the most misunderstood constraints. The context window represents how much text the model can process in a single interaction. Obviously this could be video or images now with multimodality. Modern models advertise windows of up to 1 million tokens, roughly 750,000 words, which sounds impressive, but research consistently shows that model performance degrades as you approach these limits. A study published in 2024 by Lure and colleagues found that models perform well when relevant information was at the beginning or end of long context documents. But accuracy dropped dramatically when critical information was in the middle. They called this the lost in the middle phenomenon. More recent research from Chroma in July 2025 documented what they termed context rot. They evaluated 18 state of the art models, including GPT 4.1, Claude 4, Gemini 2.5, and Quen 3. They found that language models don't use their context uniformly. Performance becomes increasingly unreliable as input length grows, even for simple tasks. The experiments showed this degradation occurs well before hitting advertised context limits. Granted, Chroma is a vector database provider, so they have an interest in pushing a narrative to sell their retrieval technology. But we've seen this pattern consistently across independent researchers now. The practical implication is stark. A consultant who believes the model can reliably process and synthesize a 50-page briefing document is likely to be disappointed or mm. embarrassed. The model might handle parts of it well, whilst completely missing or misinterpreting other sections. Here's why this matters for hallucinations. When you understand how these models work, how they generate outputs and struggle with long context, you can design verification workflows that work with these limitations rather than against them. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you later in this video. But the technical limitations are only part of the story. There's also a human factor here. When you combine models that tend to hallucinate with users who overestimate capabilities and then remove verification processes, you get the disasters we've been seeing. Consider the consultant working 50 or 60 hours a week. They're exhausted. They've used AI successfully for smaller tasks. They've delegated the final 10 pages of a white paper to the model. Skim the output and submit. The hallucinated citations look right. The prose is fluent. Without active verification, there's nothing to catch the fabrications. I want to be clear about something here. I don't believe AI should be doing 100% of your writing. Writing at the end of the day is thinking. Your ability to articulate ideas clearly is your ability to reason through them. Even if AI assists with research and polish, the first draft should come from your own mind. That cognitive engagement is what helps you spot when something doesn't fit. So let's talk about actually solving this problem. How do you put checks in place to catch hallucinations before they cost you? I experimented with several approaches. Let me tell you what didn't work first. I tried setting up a dedicated fact-checking assistant using a vanilla system prompt. I created a separate project in ChatGPT with instructions to fact-check and score claims in any given text. The results I found were inconsistent. The model would miss claims that needed verification. Outputs varied wildly between runs. I tried this across several models, including Claude and Gemini. None solved the problem reliably and performance degraded further as the document length increased. I learned that fact-checking is fundamentally a structured task. It works best within a proper framework, not through ad hoc prompting. Here's what effective fact-checking requires. First, claim decomposition. 
you need to break the document into individual verifiable claims. This is harder than it sounds. You need to identify which claims can actually be verified against external sources. Capture enough context so each claim makes sense in isolation and ensure you haven't missed anything. Second, intelligent verification. You need to search for corroborating or contradicting evidence using reputable sources. Sometimes you want exact verification. Sometimes you just want corroboration. The search strategy needs to adapt to the claim type. Third, aggregation and scoring. Individual claim verdicts need to roll up into an overall assessment that highlights the most significant issues. Fourth, speed and cost efficiency. If verification takes too long or costs more than the project is worth, it won't get used. I built a fact-checking tool that implements this method. It's available as an MCP server and a web app. MCP, by the way, is Model Context Protocol, and it's a standard that allows AI models to connect to external tools. This means it integrates directly into Claude or any other agentic client. So I never have to leave my working environment. Let me walk you through how it works in practice. The tool breaks your document into individual claims. Remember the context window problem? By atomizing claims, we're working with the model's limitations rather than working against them. Each claim is small enough for the model to process effectively. We're not asking it to verify an entire document in one pass. This dramatically reduces the likelihood of hallucinations during verification process. Each claim gets searched against public sources, evaluated for evidence and given a verdict, a confidence score and an importance rating. Everything aggregates into an overall score that highlights the most significant misalignments. Let me show you with this demonstration. I'm starting by asking Claude to orchestrate an AI operator playbook. Claude starts by researching key topics like hallucinations, GPU costs, to build a knowledge base before writing a single word. Claude drafts the initial content for the playbook. Instead of finalizing it immediately, it prepares to send it through the BrainCube check tool, which is the fact checker that I have built. It's essentially queuing up a rigorous fact check on its own work before presenting it to me. I can click the link to watch the process in real time. Here's the BrainCube dashboard. The report is ready and it's a good thing we did this. The initial draft only scored a 4.6 out of 10. The system flagged specific areas of misalignment showing me exactly which claims were refuted or lacked sufficient evidence alongside the citations for the claims that were supported. This gives us a granular look at what needs to be fixed. Back in the chat, Claude automatically reads these results. It tells me it has incorporated the corrections and is now rewriting the playbook. With the facts straight, it proceeds to the design phase and generating the actual code for the PowerPoint slides. And here's the final delivery. Claude provides a summary table showing what was corrected based on the audit, fixing dates, definitions, and stats. Finally, I get the fully generated slide deck. This is the kind of check that professional work requires, not a guarantee of perfection, but a systematic process that catches the errors most likely to cause problems. The tool is available now. There's a link in the description. AI can accelerate your work dramatically, but verification is the price of that acceleration. Build it into your workflow now before you learn the hard way why it matters. That's it for today. If you found this useful, subscribe for more analysis on AI, AI engineering agents, AI adoption. If you try the fact checker, let me know how it works for you. Thank you.